What is up, folks? This is Ericast, and welcome back to Minecraft. All right, so built a bridge and a few other things. Uh, we're going to be working over there today, but I first want to show you what I did between episodes. Um, it wasn't much, but well, I say it wasn't much. What I did down here wasn't much. What I did overall was a heck of a lot. All right, so you'll notice there's a few additions. Uh, we've got that thing up there and this thing right here, and we've got another chest. Uh, inner chest, same thing, except for this time I made it with white wool um, instead of the gray, which I made the other one, which you see right here. Um, let's see, all right, so the other thing, I made 16K storages for all of these. And we've got a lot more coal and cobblestone and redstone and lapis and not really diamonds. <laughs> uh, for all the caving that I did, I did not find a lot of diamonds. Um, a bit of a problem, but I mean, we have enough to do what we want to in the near future. The problem is going to be, well, I really need to set up my mine. That way I can start doing some trip mining because of course caves go up and down and all over. So I've got a decent bit of iron in here, um, some copper, some tin, osmium, a little bit more iron and some lead here. And then this is what I've smelted up so far. I didn't want to smelt up everything because you know, hopefully we can get some ore processing going before I smelt up all of that, but we've got plenty of ingots. The only reason I had them in here was just to show you guys what I'd gather as far as that went. So I'm gonna go ahead and move everything in here over to here. Oop. And it should just be, yeah, like so. All right, so as far as what we did over here, I've got an importer going, which does exactly what it says. So stick something there and it goes into the system. Super simple and easy. What I did do, however, was make a stack upgrade. That way, whenever I put something in here, it takes the whole stack. So that actually is extremely helpful because Often, when you're down there mining, you're dumping, well, not that one, this one, you're dumping all of your inventory's worth of coal and whatever you just picked up, iron, uh, diamonds, hopefully. Um, your inventory's completely full. You're wanting to empty it back into the system, and so you fill it up. Well, if it's doing one item at a time, it can be pretty darn slow. Let's go ahead and just demonstrate that. So let's just go ahead and fill up our inventory. Not completely, but see, it's, I mean, it's going, but it's gonna take a long time to get through all these stacks. Now, when we do this, it's really quick. So we can actually make it even faster uh, by adding some speed upgrades, but I'm not really intending on doing that at the moment. So, uh, the disk manipulator is another thing that we had. And what it does is it takes information from one of the disks and transfers it from this disk to the other disks that are in the system. Now, I don't really care to do that right now. There's no reason to. But when you're upgrading to larger disks, um, it's pretty necessary that way you don't have to you know just go in here with only that disk in the system and then pull everything out and then you know put it in a chest and you know keep doing that until it's empty so yeah now the other thing that this is what we're going to be doing today uh, the other thing that I did well I guess two more things um, I made an ender chest as a way of storing things that are commonly useful when we're out in the field. So, that was a little weird. Um, I've got some picks in here, some food, some torches, 
that will grow as time progresses. But it's basically a shulker box that you carry around on you. Um, but the advantage is when you die, you're not going to lose everything because it's actually in this chest. It's just, just that we can access it from anywhere. So that's very, very nice. Um, let's see, what else? I made some moonstone pickaxes with some pretty good chance, if I do say myself. Um, this is just a pretty much straight, normal, um, efficiency, uh, mending silk touch pick. I've also got, um, fortune three. It does have tinted on it. Um, I'm not really using that, but what tinted does is you can change the glow of the enchantment that's on it. So you can barely see it on this one, but you know, you can see how it kind of waves and flashes and stuff. You can change the color of that. It's more obvious on like an iron pick or something or a diamond pick, but you can still see it. So, and I've also got a scorching heat pick. I didn't really mean to make that, but it actually works pretty well when I'm trying to get cobblestone or trying to get stone. Uh, that way I don't have to smelt up cobblestone or waste my silk touch. Um, so, I mean, it's it's fine. I generally don't prefer it, but eh, it's there are situations where it's useful. Um, actually, it would probably be more useful on a shovel. Um, that way you can just go out to a desert and get glass. I mean, you don't even have to smelt it. You don't have to do anything with it. Just get glass. That's nice. Okay, um, and I also have... I'm going to keep our mending for now. Um, I've also got a bow that's okay. It's not amazing. Um, I generally don't like to have flame on a bow because in my experience and in watching YouTubers play, flame usually gets you caught on fire. <laughs> I mean, it's nice when you can, you know, watch a mob at distance die to the flame, but generally it's a zombie or baby zombie or something that runs up and sets you on fire and then it's just a bad day. So I don't generally like to have flame on it. Uh, I've got quick draw one, which is pretty nice. True shot, um, which is pretty nice. Uh, quick draw does what you think. Uh, true shot, I think makes it fly a little faster and definitely makes it fly truer. So true shot is definitely you know, something you want in there. Uh, I don't have the f most powerful power on there but I do have I actually have a power five book I'm just not going to use it yet um I've got a few books in here as you can see um some of them are decently useful some of them are not there's a multi-shot which is pretty cool um fires three arrows but only uses one um I think I might have an infinity in here I'm not, I should, yeah, I've, I've got a bunch of stuff, but there are so many enchants now that it is harder and harder to find the book. Like, let me see, I've got five power fours. I mean, well, I guess I could pretty easily make that a power five bow, but it generally one shots anything anyway. Um, four true shot twos, several bulwarks, and soul bounds. And soul bound is actually really nice too. Uh, Soulbound makes it so that when you die with an item, it comes back um, with you. So you don't have to go pick it up again. Um, but, you know, you need to pick stuff up anyway. So it just decreases your chance that you're going to actually lose it. So Smite 4, you know, I've, I've got a bunch of stuff in there, but yeah. All right. So that brings us up to what we are going to do today. So I want to get started with immersive engineering and I'm gonna try not to look at the book too much. Uh, we can go ahead and take a look at it just so you guys can see what's in here. Um, there's a bunch of different pages. You've got alloys and mineral deposits and ores and we're gonna be making a Coke oven, um, an alloy kiln, and maybe the blast furnaces if we have time. But we may not have time um because i've already spent 10 minutes just talking about the stuff that i have done so far so <laughs> let's go ahead and get into it so for the coke oven we are going to need 
some clay, bricks, sandstone. I don't know if clay or bricks are clay, but we're gonna need some sandstone too to make some cook brick. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so we're going to need some sandstone and clay balls, but we need to smelt these into bricks first. So we're gonna actually need several of these. I'll probably make one on camera and then make several more off camera because I'm gonna need a bunch of creosote oil, which we get from uh, making cold coke. And I'm gonna need a bunch of cold coke to uh, smelt some stuff up. So let's do, that's gonna be plenty for now. So I'm gonna smelt these up real quick. And we'll go ahead and stick these in another one. Okay, so there's 64 and there is 64. So, what have we got? Uh, let's go ahead and do brick. Okay, that's too many bricks. Um, Coke, there we go. All right, so we've got a simple pattern here. I should be able to, yep, just do that. And I need to put those in there, otherwise the bricks are gonna disappear as soon as I do anything. All right, so I'm just gonna go ahead and make a stack. We don't actually need that many to make just one, but um, like I said, I'm gonna need more later. So let's go ahead and put these over here, like so. And then let's go upstairs and head across the way. So actually, you know what? Before we do that, let's go ahead and do this and get a stack. We've got plenty of coal, so I'm not worried about taking away reserves that we're gonna need for, you know, caving or whatever. So, oh. Also, don't use an ax when you open and close doors with a wooden frame. I have had to replace this log so many times <laughs> because I've right clicked and I've stripped the log. So I'm gonna do something more about this pathway when I get around to it, I guess, probably between this episode and next. But we do have a nice little rope bridge here. I kind of wish it hung down a little bit, but I like it. All right, so this is a, going to be temporary. I'm gonna build some buildings over here, um, but they need to be fairly industrial. So I am going to figure something out. I'm not entirely sure. I have a design idea in my head for the overall design of this place, but as far as specific design of this particular building, I'm gonna have to work on that. I'm gonna have to do some experimenting. So it's a three by three by three with all of the blocks filled in and I don't have a hammer. Okay, now I have a hammer. <laughs> it's actually pretty simple to make. So it's engineer's hammer. So you just need some sticks, some iron and some string. So real straightforward. And then you right click on the middle block and you have your oven. So this one is pretty straightforward. It's also somewhat automatable. Um, I've automated them in the past, but there's not a whole lot you can do with them. All you do, stick your coal in there and coal blocks are gonna take a lot longer than just pieces of coal. So keep that in mind when you're making your own. I know I'm gonna need a lot, so I'm just gonna use coal blocks for now. And I'm not in a huge rush to get them done, so we'll, we'll be okay with using blocks. Um, but we can drain this, and I will make some barrels. That's probably what we're gonna, hmm. I know there's several types of barrels, but as for which one we're gonna use, So we've got this engineer's decor one, it's a fluid barrel, and it holds 12 buckets, so that's not a lot. Um, gunfire barrel, wooden barrel, 
is immersive engineering, but I need cold cloak to make, or rather, I need the resulting, let me show you here, creosote to make uh, treated wood planks, which I can't do. But I can, I think, make a metal barrel. Yeah, I'm just going to need a good deal of iron. And that one, I'm not sure how much these hold. Let's go ahead and take a look in here. Is it under this? Nope. Hmm. Let's see if I can find it. The problem is there are so many different pages in here. It's like, okay, so what do you think would be best? Uh, fluid pipe? No. Pump? Outlet? Nope. Hmm. Okay. So it looks like they hold 12, um, at least the wooden ones do. And it specifies that the difference between the wooden and the, st or the metal is that they can hold hot fluids. So yeah, 12 buckets, and they're more expensive than this one, which also holds 12 buckets. A metal bar can make 12 of these. So yeah, it's it'll be easier to make these. And we're going to stick with these for now. We can make a larger tank uh, that's actually decently large that can hold a whole bunch of buckets, but that's going to be a little bit to our future. Um, I want something simple for now, so we're going to go ahead and make some of these. And I do have plenty of barrels already made, so that should be pretty simple. All right, let's look at this real quick, see if it's... Yeah, as you can see, it takes a long time to do a block of coal. Uh, you can also put wood in there, um, and that will give you charcoal, and it'll also give you creosote. So, if you don't have the coal to spend, but you need creosote, just use wood. It's actually pretty pretty easy, um, but you do need planks, or not planks, uh, logs. So, make sure you don't turn them into planks <laughs> before uh, you set that up. Alright, so... We can actually make another one. We've got 36 blocks left. But again, we'll do that in a little bit. So we're going to go ahead and make some tanks. That way we can at least let's do that. Uh, store some of the creosote that we've got built up in there. Because I think you'll notice when you're making uh, a setup to make creosote or even make whole coke, uh, I'd say make coal coke. Your barrier for how much you can make is going to be creosote. Because if you don't take it out, then it just clogs up the system and you're just stuck with your machines or oven sitting there doing absolutely nothing because it's already, the interior is already filled up with the, co or the uh, creosote. So keep that in mind that you do have to empty it over time. All right, now, what am I thinking? I'm thinking something, I'm thinking barrels. So let's go ahead and put that there. And we actually could have just shift clicked the pattern, but it's fine. So 15, that's gonna be plenty for now. Uh, 15 barrels, I'm not gonna do that multiplication in my head. Actually, yeah, I am. Okay, so 150 plus, 30? 3? No, 30. Yeah, plus 30. Okay. So, that's not actually too bad. You know, 180 barrels. Uh, that's not bad at all. Alright, so I'm just gonna... Actually, this is a lot of barrels. And then I wonder if they will drain if I do this. I didn't even bring any buckets over here. I didn't need to go there. Um... I'll just stick them like this, and I want to see if they drain into each other. Oh, that's nice. So right-click on them, and it gives you the amount. I'm actually liking this mod quite a bit. Uh, engineer's Decor. Oh, that's not how you spell Engineer's. All right. Um, yeah, because Engineer's has an N. <laughs> oh, and 
with two E's. And is not with a mod. All right, so you've got some symbols here, some signs you can set up, which is kind of cool. You've got some ladders, uh, including some rungs that are kind of neat. Um, the brick, uh, I don't know. I might try to use it uh, just to see, but I'm still not sure about it. But it's got some interesting things in here. You've got a small electric furnace. This is actually what I want to make at a crafting table. Because you notice, I, or if you remember, I said previously that I wanted to make a crafting table uh, that was like Tinker's, where we could put items into it and they would stay there. Well, we have our system that we have now, but still it's useful to have a, just a crafting table that you can carry around with you that is very easy to use. And so I'll probably make this one because it actually has an inventory and everything. So it's it's really nice. Um, but there's, there's a lot of just different things in here. Your fluid pipes and valves and stuff and incinerators and some of these blocks are actually really good um but yeah just different things it's a small mod but i i like it still no all right i'm just gonna fast forward and you're gonna find out exactly what the coal cup does okay so as you can see a single block actually takes up quite a bit of uh space as far as the creosote oil goes so, like I said, be mindful. Um, it does take a really long time for this to process, so you're going to want several of these things going, uh, which we are going to do. So, like I said, just keep that in mind. Make sure that you've got some sort of storage going. Um, I'm going to have to figure out exactly how I want to, you know, make this go, um, I guess I gonna have to do I have any blocks okay I do I'm like come all the way out here without blocks oh all right thankfully oh we have to okay shift click to break that uh hello where did he go you guys saw it I was like, it looks, I don't know about that. That was a little fishy. Um, it looked like it went straight towards me. Oh, you can put them on the side too. That's pretty nice. Um, it looked like it went straight towards me and then it just disappeared. Apparently it was on this side. So, yeah. Anyway, I'll figure something out as far as the building goes for these guys. I'm going to build some more. That way we can get a decent amount of creosote going and coal coke, of course. Um, but something about cold coke, it actually has a decent amount of burn time more than normal coal does. Let's, let's take a look over here. Coal. All right. Um, yeah. So you can see it's twice that. So charcoal we have at 1600. Really? Charcoal is equal to? Okay. Uh, charcoal and coal are equal um, at 1600 ticks. And your cold coke has a burn time of 3,200 ticks, so twice as much, which is really, really nice. Now, if you use a block of cold coke, that is 32,000 ticks. So it is actually more efficient, because if you think about it, it takes nine uh, cold coke to make a block. And... The block is 10 times more efficient than the actual piece of coal coke. So, same goes with coal. Interesting, interesting. So, something just to keep in mind. Now, hmm, trying to think exactly how I'm going to set all this up, but that will be for the next episode. Man, this flies by quickly. I was planning on getting a whole bunch of stuff done, but... I guess explaining what I did between episodes took up so much time. <laughs> yeah, um, it ended up being just a Coke oven and some tanks. Well, that's okay. We'll get into the whole setup 
of making steel and all that kind of stuff in the next episode. So until then, hope you guys enjoyed and take it easy.